Monsieur Lévesque, vous êtes demandé par Madame Lévesque, euh, la lombe, pardon. Here we are, first match sprint as uh, Madison Dempster gets a buy on a uh, odd number of rider. Alors, ce sera Adèle Degagné against Annie Scott. The winner of each heat advances to the quarterfinals. And already we have uh, Degagne who takes a huge lead here on Annie Scott, surprising her. So this is going to be a non-contest. Alors pour Degagne, ce sera évidemment une réussite et son entraîneur Pascal Choquette lui dit, lui dit de modérer ses faits et elle passe au quart de finale. So Degagne goes to the quarterfinals. As we'll be setting up our second match sprint in a moment. Welcome, everybody, to the Canadian Track Championships powered by Alexis. This is uh, the championship for the U17 junior and para cyclists. And we'll have uh, our next matchup will be Polly Mason against Bradbury. Once again, the winner takes all moves to the quarterfinals. Et c'est parti, deuxième vague. So here we have a rider going down. So I think we're going to reload and relock within the first half lap. If a rider goes down, there is a possibility to restart. So there is a warning for rider 103, Katrina Polly Mason, riding on the blue band.
So we're going to restart this one here. And this one is starting off with a bang already. And as I uh, told you earlier on, with 105, Nicole Bradbury from NCCH uh, and uh, Katrina Polly Mason from Southwestern Cycling Center of Ontario uh, with a warning there on the first uh, attempt in this match sprint. Eight the finals of our U17 women's sprint uh, and now it is a slight lead here in the finale. And the last ditch effort here by Bradbury, uh, sorry, by Polly Mason. And it will be Bradbury, however, taking the win. Polly Mason trying to come over the top in the finale there, but couldn't do it. So it is a good trip to the eighth of finals here for Nicole Bradbury. Next duo, uh, heat number four de l'équipe du Québec. On aura le numéro 110, 110, Iris Gabelier. And 108 uh, from Team Alberta, Nairi Bearcloth. Nairi Bearcloth uh, moving it far to the front already. The bell rings, Bearcloth making a move, Gabelier sticking to her back wheel. Just peering down at the rear wheel of Bearcloth. Does Gabelier have uh, the gusto to get over the top? It's going to be a very hard affair, not a lot of real estate to work with. She's going to try all she can, and it's going to be Nairi Bearcloth uh, taking uh, the win and moving to the quarterfinals. Next matchup here, we'll have at number 116, Adèle Normand de Chicoutimi. And number 113 from Canada, Lily Ujfalusi. 
Et Normand qui prend les choses en main dès le départ de cette course, mais en difficulté Uge Falusi, but Uge Falusi now coming back. Can Normand protect that sprinter's lane? Make it to the quarterfinals, because here comes Lily Ujfalusi with one lap to go. A lot of uh, boards to cover here, but uh, blowing right by. I think Normand went out too strong there. And Lily Ujfalusi, uh, he's uh, even uh, going to be able to taper off here at the end, and that's probably what her coach will be telling her to do, to lay off the pedals and take it to the line. There you are. Exact uh, good coaching there. No sense in uh, wasting too much energy. It's, energy. it's going to be a long process to the gold medal matchup, if that is the case for Lily Utsfalusi, winning this one. Next duo now on track with 102 from Triple Shot Cycling. This is Megan Barnes. And we'll have from Cannondale, powered by Fortis, also from BC, Maya Matson. And it's a lead now for Barnes. She's moving to the front and trying to stick there. And I think it's going to be mission accomplished for her as she'll come over the line. And Megan Barnes taking heat number six. Up with our seventh heat of this uh, event here. Once again, we are with our U17 women's eighth of finals. We'll have two teammates from the Cannondale Powered by Fortius crew. Caitlin Wallen with number 119 and Kate Matson with 114.
Ah, a nice move here. <laughs> That's what you call a surprise move. Somebody opens the door and lets the cat out. There you go. And uh, the uh, motion was uh, done by Caitlin Wallen. But look at this return by Kate Matson. She's like, what a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute here. We're not done. Matson comes right over the top and takes ownership of the sprinter's lane. A beautiful performance by Kate Matson right there. Wow. Surprising Caitlin Wallen, who tried to, to surprise her. But strength and power was the name of the game, uh, giving the win to Kate Matson. And on to our final heat here in the U17 Women's 8th uh, final. On aura deux Québécoises. Le numéro 117, Florence Normand. Le 112, Seneca Paquette Jagger. So two Quebecers here. 117, Florence Normand. 112, Paquette Jagger. And uh, taking to the front, Paquette Jagger. Alors, c'est elle qui lance les hostilités. Mais attention, Florence Norman n'a pas dit son dernier mot. Cherchant à la dépasser, mais pas beaucoup d'espace. Trying to go over the top it was Norman, but not a lot of space. And it's going to... Oh, so, so close. That is going to be a photo finish, if I'm not mistaken there. Yeah, the commissaires and our timing crew looking at that one. I hope you can get that one up on the screen. That would be really cool to see... Uh, So we'll see. Et c'est Seneca Paquette de Jigger qui l'emporte. So Seneca Paquette Jigger takes the win and moves to the quarterfinals. But a very, very close one right there. Next category, if uh, we follow the schedule, which is the case, it'll be the U17 men's sprint eighth of final. Chez les cadets, messieurs, maintenant pour les huitièmes de finale. Et ça débute à l'instant avec Dylan Bivitz, number two, and wearing bib number one for Team Alberta, Reed Kinneberg. Kinneberg 
already teasing a Dylan. Multi uh, champion already. Oh, no, you don't not leave the door open for a rider like Dylan Vivich, especially when you're coming up to the last 250 meters. So Kinneberg will have to do uber amounts of work to get back. But look at this. This is turning out to be a much closer affair than we thought. Can Kinneberg come over the top? Bivich going to have to give another little kick here. It's going to be close to the line, but Dylan Bivich is going to take it on a great try by Reed Kinneberg, and he deserves your applause. So does Dylan Bivich. Great show, gentlemen. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, your round of applause for these uh, gentlemen. Really putting in a great effort was uh, Reed Kinneberg. And uh, doing what he does best is Dylan Bivick reading the str strategy of a race perfectly. One of the most strategic riders I've seen to date in these uh, younger age groups. Uh, going to our second heat, we'll have from Midwick Cycling Club, Andrew Scott. And uh, from Red Devil Cycling Academy out of Kelowna, B.C., beautiful Kelowna, Eric Ha ha, you man. Last riding from the go. Haheim to the front. Trying to uh, And there goes Andrew Scott taking that one as he uh, answered the attack by Haheim. And that takes us to our next heat, heat number three, where we'll have uh, Racer Sportif's Matabi Holmes, a team member from Oakville, Ontario, Michael Leonard, going against Baden, Ontario's Callisto FCV, team member Tyler Rourke. A lot of cat and mouse going on here between these two gentlemen. Part of the tricks of the trade in this match sprinting. So once again, uh, Leonard in the dark outfit in the red, white, and black of Callisto is Tyler Rourke. Oh, what a move by Tyler there as he just blows into sixth gear here and uh, will uh, leave uh, Michael Leonard in his dust 
behind. So Tyler Rourke will be picking up uh, the win as he moves to the quarterfinals. To the track now, our next duo, we will have here Mathias Guimet de l'équipe du Québec going against Team Alberta's Lucas Bonkowski. Fast start here by Bonkowski as he tries uh, to uh, get away early from uh, Guimet. Uh, Guimet qui doit faire un peu de rattrapage ici alors que Bonkowski est parti sur les chapeaux de roue. Mais ça ne semble pas être un problème pour lui. Not a problem for uh, Guimet as he uh, sticks to his back wheel. The bell will ring. 250 meters to go here. Did Bonkowski go a bit late? Guimet... Uh, now benefiting from the draft, and he decides to turn it into the next gear, ramp it up, and there you go. Bonkowski, the legs may be tired already, going almost three laps out. Et ce sera une victoire pour Mathias Guilmette. And we're going to move now to heat number five of eight. Cinquième vague de huit. En vue d'une passage en quart de finale. Looking for a trip to the quarterfinals for these athletes. So we're going to have on track from Triple Shot Cycling Club, Connor Bosenberg, number 28. And from the Juventus Cycling Club out of Edmonton, Alberta, Michael Gall. Michael Go says it's time to go early here. And there is the bell ringing. And this is going to be a non-contest. So Michael looking over his shoulder. He will take a, a few pounds of pressure off those pedals and will gently just coast in here to the finish line, taking his heat number five in the men's eighth of finals.
Next matching uh, here will be heat number six, Finley McEwen from Callisto FCV against Tag Cycling race team member Aiden Crocker. Gentlemen, you must be riding on the track, please. Not on the blue band. Gentlemen, to the track. Thank you. And this is pure match sprinting here, ladies and gentlemen. The psych out game that goes, the standstills. It's fun to see these younger riders honing their technique, but right there, that standstill brought uh, an idea to Finley McEwen's uh, mind, and that is, let's go, let's open this up. And they are still a, a lap and a half out. Great strategy here, but whoa, look at this. Aiden Crocker's attack or counterattack here. This is gonna be a long 250. Crocker coming right over the top, can he make it? And McEwen struggling to stay there, but he's protecting it oh so slightly. Crocker is going to come around Ben's three and four, and here comes back McEwen. What a race here. This one's going to go to the line, and it's going to be, yes, Finley McEwen in a beautiful showing of strategy and strength here for these young riders. Wow. Well, that's a display of pure match sprinting there for these U17 riders. Great strategy, great racing, gentlemen. Congratulations. That's the way you do it. Great to see these young riders displaying a strategy, technique, and power. Hats off to the coaches that are teaching these young riders uh, the foundations of uh, the uh, different disciplines. So we're going to go now to our next uh, matchup. This will be Jacob Rubuliak and Liam Carney in these uh, U17 heats. Rider that wins the heat goes to the quarterfinals later on in the day. So just a reminder for uh, the athletes, you must not ride on the blue band. You must ride above the blue band, please.
Oh, look at this. Blistering pace with the one lap to go. Rebuliak saying, well, I might take a little trip to the front here and join me if you can, Liam. And that is exactly what he's doing right now. Problem is, if you go too early, sometimes you pop at the end. This is going to go to the wire once again as Rebuliak taking it. And it's going to be a win for Jacob Rebuliak. Cycling BC. So we go to our final heat of the U17 men's eighth of finals. We have midweek cycling clubs, uh, Matthew Hogan with number 21. Et l'équipe du Québec de Sherbrooke, Grégory Santiago, Zapata, Cordoba. So Cordoba with the uh, green helmet and in the black helmet is Matthew Hogan. In a blistering start, and that's going to carry him right to the line for Matthew Hogan. There's going to be a no contest here. And he moves to the quarterfinals and completes our U17 category. That's going to be a change of pace now, as we'll go from uh, these individual races now to our group races. Mm -hmm. 